we'll go ahead and start on our backs. So just go ahead and lie down on your back in a giant X shape. And the first thing that you'll do once you find yourself on your floor is just take a few big breaths in through the nose and an audible ex exhale out of the mouth, letting ourselves just have that moment to receive the support from underneath us. And then let go of any of the things that we no longer wish to or need to carry forward. And then continuing to stay with just this notion of taking big breaths in and big breaths out, slide your left leg up and over your right leg so the ankles stack right on top of each other. Reach your arms up and over your head and then grab your rest, left wrist with your right hand and arc your body more towards the right. And then you'll notice here that you can breathe into that left side body, maybe let your left hip and thigh descend a bit more towards the floor. And again, just big breaths in through the nose and audible breaths out through the mouth. We've got one more complete breath cycle here, noticing where you can continue to soften and release on the left side. And then as you inhale, you'll open back up to your giant X shape, straightening head on top of hips arms out in that big diagonal. Great, and then we'll take the other side. Exhale, cross your right leg over your left, reach both arms up and then arc them over to the left. Hold the right hand with your left hand and just take a few steady breaths here. So we're working on just allowing ourselves to take a moment to pause. The tendency often can be to focus on things that are problematic or challenging or not going well. And instead we're reminding ourselves that there are good things that are happening that allow us to take that exhale, allow us to meet our needs in a little bit more efficient and easy manner. On your next inhalation, you'll draw yourself back into that giant X shape. And this time you might choose to hug your legs together, reach your arms up and overhead and maybe interlace the hands and wiggle and stretch and yawn in any way that allows you to feel like there's a big stretch happening in the side body. And on your next exhalation, just gently hug your knees into your chest, give yourself a little hug. And you might choose to stay here or rock a little bit from right to left, massaging the low back into the floor. And then find yourself at a still neutral spot. Bring your hands to the inside edges of your thighs, grab the outside edges of your feet and push your feet into each other first. And again, you'll just rock and roll a little right to left, feeling the low back sort of soften into the floor. And you'll notice that if you push into the big toe mounds, you can widen your knees a little further apart. And notice how that feels on the inner thighs and inner groin. And you might choose to stay here or extend one foot up towards the sky for a half happy baby. You might choose to extend the opposite foot up towards the sky for maybe a full happy baby. And you might choose to just bend and straighten one leg as you're maybe still rocking or maybe still here. So just allow yourself to just notice what's happening in your body, finding that moment of gratitude that you have this time and this space and that the body continues to carry us through all the crazy things that we ask of it. Okay. When you're ready, draw the knees back into the chest. Give yourself a big hug. And then release the feet to the floor. Release the head to the floor if it's not. Cool. Bring your hands alongside your hips. Walk your feet in so they're about hip distance apart. We're gonna try this one arm at a time. So inhale, press through your feet, lift your hips, lift your left arm up and overhead. And then exhale, lower your hips and lower the arm back down. And we'll try that on the other side. Inhale, push through the feet, lift the right arm up and overhead, bridge pose. And then exhale, lower the hips and lower the arm. 
This time we'll do both arms. Inhale, push through the feet, lift the arms, lift the hips. And exhale, lower the arms and lower the hips. And we'll repeat that set one more time. So inhale, push through the feet, lift the left arm up and overhead. And exhale, lower the hips and lower the left arm. And then right side, inhale, push through the feet, lift the hips, lift the right arm. And exhale, lower the hips and lower the arm. And then both arms, inhale, push through the feet, lift the hips, lift the arm. And exhale, lower the hips and lower the arms. Go ahead and keep your hands alongside your hips. Inhale, push through the feet, lift the hips once again. And then walk the shoulders a little bit up towards the ears and walk them underneath you. From here, you can interlace the hands or just press the palms down into the floor, but you'll take three to five slow, steady, calm breaths here and just observe and notice what you notice happening now. Finding gratitude for where you can send that breath, where the body is active. And at the end of your next exhalation, gently release your hands, untuck your shoulders and lower your pelvis back down to the floor. Take a moment to pause here. You might reach the arms alongside your ears and find a little bit of length in the spine. You might roll or rock a little bit, a little right to left and notice what that feels like. We're gonna check in one more time. Open your arms out to the right and to the left. Keep your feet about hip distance apart, knees bent. And then cross your right leg over your left thigh completely so the thighs are touching. Yep. With the thighs touching like you're in a cute little dress, pull both legs over towards the right and resist with the left knee. You'll notice now that the more you push up with that left thigh as you pull the legs towards the right, you might begin to get the top of your IT band or your outer hip on the left side. And you'll just take one more breath here. As you inhale, come back through center, cross that right ankle over the top of your left thigh, flex through both feet and draw your knees towards your chest. Thread your hands through the whole of your legs and maybe grab the back of the thigh or the front of the shin for Sukhi Radrasana. And again, you might stay still. You might rock a little from right to left. You might notice how you can soften and open in the shoulders and in the chest and maybe just let an audible sigh out through the mouth. And then if you're in movement, please come to stillness. Lower that left foot to the floor. Grab the outside edge of your right foot and open the leg up for half happy baby here. Let the left knee open out to the left if it would like. And you might choose to straighten that right leg or not, but you'll just take a moment to pause and breathe into those inner thighs once again and notice what you notice. Nice job. If the right leg is straight, go ahead and bend it, draw the left knee back up to center and then plant that right foot next to the left. Open the arms back out to the right and to the left and then we'll try all that on the other side. So cross your left thigh up and over like you're sitting in a dress, pull both legs over to the left and resist with the right shin, right thigh. And you'll just take three breath cycles here. Noticing again where you can soften, where you can release. Finding that sometimes our awareness goes to what's not working and we can use the law of continuity to try to bring ourselves back. All right, come back into your center. I'll explain that in a moment. Cross the left ankle over the top of the right thigh, flex through both of your feet and then hug your knees in towards your chest for Suki Randrasana. And then again, take a moment to notice what feels good to you here, to be in stillness or to move just a little bit. So the law of continuity is this notion that comes from Samkhya philosophy. It's one of the ancient Indian philosophies that underlies Ayurveda as well as yoga. And it basically means that something that is in motion will stay in motion, meaning you know whatever is happening will continue to happen. And because of that, we wanna notice when we're thinking thoughts or having patterns of behavior that we don't wish to continue to bring our awareness to them so that we can discontinue those thoughts. Very gently, you'll release 
your right foot to the floor, grab the outside edge of your left leg and open for half happy baby. Maybe that right leg opens out to the right as the left knee drops towards the floor. Maybe the left leg straightens or maybe it doesn't. So to go with this, we've got the law of continuity, but we also have the law of alternation. So we're attempting to use the law of alternation, which means things are constantly changing. And we're trying to use that for our benefit. So noticing how we can change for our awareness towards things that are working for us, things that are meeting our needs so that we can disrupt that law of continuity that has us focusing on the negative or things that aren't working so well. All right, on your next in-breath, go ahead and bring that left knee back in, right leg back to center and lower both feet onto the floor. Now from here, you might extend your arms alongside your ears and then extend your legs long and just take one more moment to stretch and wiggle and yawn. And in this way, I encourage you to flex through the feet and maybe see if you can arch that spine if the legs are straight and if the knees are bent, just plant the feet on the floor. Awesome stuff. Go ahead and release here. Bring your hands alongside your hips. Actively flex through both of your feet. Now walk your shoulder blades underneath you Start to push down through the forearms and see if you can come into a mini fish pose. So you're just hugging those shoulder blades onto your back, maybe propping up onto the elbows as much as you want to, just to feel the shoulder blades coming onto your back. And then gently you'll release the shoulder blades and lie all the way back down. Awesome stuff. Extend your right arm alongside your ears and roll over onto your right side and make your way up to hands and knees. And once you find yourself on hands and knees, highly encourage the use of your blanket underneath your knees. We're gonna spend a lot of time on our knees today. So that would probably be very helpful for most of us. And then once you're established in that, go ahead and walk your knees, ankles and shins together. Tuck both sets of toes under and then start to push your pelvis back towards your heels and bring your spine up for vertical. Everyone's favorite pose, toe squat. Yep, you guys already made sure those pinky toes are under there, so you're good. <laughs> and then we'll reach up through our right arm, bend your right elbow and grab your right elbow with your left hand. Start to push the right elbow to the right and draw it in towards the left. And then notice if you can pull your front ribs in and back. Option to stay right here or lift left arm up, turn left thumb out, swim left arm behind you and maybe clasp for Gomukhasana arms. So wherever you are, you're allowing yourself to notice what's working and work towards that. So wherever you feel a nice opening or a nice stretch, continue to focus on that and noticing how that's alleviating some tension. Notice where the breath is and see if you can send more awareness to the big steady inhalation that's coming. And on your next in breath, you'll gently release, reaching that left arm up, reaching your right arm up and then switching sides. Bend your left elbow, grab your left elbow with your right hand. And you might just stay here, or you might take the arm variation by reaching up with the right arm, turning your thumb down, swimming it back behind you. And again, as we're here for these last three to five breaths, pay attention to what's working. Where is the breath going? Where are you feeling a nice sensation? How are you allowing yourself to relax just a little bit more in the face and the eyes as the feet might be talking? We're paying attention to the things that are working so we can start to attract more of that just into our mental awareness. Next in breath, gently release that right arm up, reach the left arm up and hands come down to the floor. Pitter patter your feet, having a happy little temper tantrum if that suits you. And again, noticing what relief feels like here and how grateful you might be for that. You might shift your weight back and take a counter stretch lifting one or perhaps both ankles up and away from the floor based upon how that feels for you. Awesome stuff. Okay, let's go ahead and draw ourselves forward to hands and knees. And the first little thing that we'll do here is just thread your left arm underneath the right side of your body, bringing your left shoulder, arm, back of hand to the floor, head to the floor. Press down into your right hand and you might come to the tips of your right fingertips as you press back into your left shoulder and just take a moment to breathe here, drawing that outer right hip back just a bit more. Yep. And then very gently, 
go ahead and push down into the right hand and return back to a tabletop position. As you're ready, you'll take that other side, just threading the right hand underneath the left side of your body, bringing the shoulder ear to the mat. Maybe come to the tips of your left fingertips and press back into the back of the right shoulder, breathing there and noticing what that feels like. And again, noticing if we can pay attention to the positive, what's working for us, where we're feeling a sense of release and support. Very gently press down into that left hand and come back to tabletop position. Awesome thought. Okay, from here, widen your hands a little wider than your shoulders. Tuck both sets of toes under and then walk your toes over to the right. Walk your right hand forward and to the right just a little bit and then roll to the right hand side to grab the outside edge of your left ankle. Pause here, flex through that left foot, hug that left heel pretty close to your bum and then push down into your bottom hand, your right hand a lot. When you're ready, you'll start to kick back through your left foot by lengthening tailbone down to your left knee. And here's a fun one for some of you. You might turn your gaze completely down towards the bottom hand. You might also take a little shrug of that left shoulder up towards your left ear and then kick back with your left leg and say hello to the back of the scapula as you feel this little movement, perhaps getting into that space where I know I hold quite a bit of tension between the shoulder blades. And you've got three more breath cycles here. So whether you're shrugging up and down or not, you're noticing how you can find something in this shape that's really working for you, that you're really enjoying. Awesome, soft. If you're in movement, go ahead and come to stillness. Gently release that left leg back behind you so it floats parallel to the floor. Great, lower the left foot to the floor so your toes are parallel to the short edge of your mat. Spin your right heel back behind you just a little bit more. Awesome sauce, and then reach your left arm up and over your head. Take a moment to hold your head with your left hand. Push into the knife edge of your left foot, so make sure you're holding the back of your head with your left hand. Yep, and then push down and see if you can open the chest up. So push down into right hand, push down into left foot, let pelvis swing forward like Michael Jackson pelvic thrust, and say hello to the side body there. Very gently, the left hand will come in front of you and you'll start to walk towards your left. So you're gonna to walk towards the long edge of your mat. Walk to your left, walk towards your back foot, walk to your left, clear as mud. Nice job, okay. So left leg is still extended long and we're turning to the side edges of our mat. So turn to your left. Walk your hands, there we go, all the way to the left. So now our hands, there we go. <laughs> Okay, now you might slide your left foot back a bit if you'd like, so it goes towards the back of your mat. You might keep your right toes tucked under and then walk your hands forward just a little bit. Now start to slide your hips back and say hello to the inside edge of that inner left thigh. Keep pressing your left pinky toe down into the floor and just notice what you notice here. See if you can keep your spine as long as it can be, so arms might be bent or they might be straight. Nice work. And on your next exhalation, start to walk your hands back so they're underneath your chest. If you need to, slide your left leg in towards your right leg about two inches. Keep the leg straight and then go ahead and stand on that right shin for parigasana. There we go. So right knee directly under right hip, left leg out to the side. And you'll start to sweep up through your right arm. Left hand is on the top of the left shin and you'll take a little side bend towards your left. And again, squeeze your right butt cheek. See if you can breathe into your right side body and then notice where you want to take the gaze to find a deeper breath. Awesome, soft. Very gently, you'll come back up through vertical. You'll cartwheel your hands down to the top of your mat and come back to hands and knees tabletop position. You might wanna take a cat and cow here just to reset the spine. And then we'll go ahead and try all of that on the other side. And again, finding something in this moment that you're really enjoying, really finding just pleasurable or meeting some need of yours. Cool. And then let's find ourselves back into stillness. Walk your hands a little wider than your shoulders. Tuck both sets of toes under and then walk your feet over towards the left. 
from there, roll to the left side of your body. Grab the outside edge of your right ankle with your right hand. Draw that heel as close to your pelvis as possible. Lift up through that inner right thigh and flex through your back foot. Now, again, you might choose to stay here. Maybe take your gaze down towards the bottom hand and then kick that back foot back. Keep lengthening your tailbone to your right knee, that's your top knee. And then maybe if you did so on the first side, you might try shrugging your shoulders a little bit towards the right ear and then kicking back in opposition and noticing how that sort of works through the back of the shoulder blade. And you've got two to three more breath cycles here. So just notice what you notice. Maybe you're grateful for something in your immediate environment, the sounds, the sight, the smells. Maybe you're grateful for what you're experiencing in your physical body. All right, go ahead and come to stillness if you're in movement. Release that right leg so it's parallel to the floor. Lower the right foot down to the floor so the toes point towards the long edge of your mat. Then turn your right, sorry, your left foot back behind you just a little bit more. Yep, grab the back of your head with your right hand. Michael Jackson. Jackson pelvic thrust your pelvis forward, press into the pinky toe edge of your back foot and see if you can open the heart space up, finding a fun stretch across your lats, maybe across your QL and your psoas on that right side. Awesome thoughts. Go ahead and bring that right hand to the floor in front of you and start to walk your hands towards the right, so towards your back leg. Great. Now, once you're there, you might slide your back foot back towards the back edge of your mat a little bit more. You might keep your left toes tucked under as you walk your hands forward and start to press your pelvis back. Now to find a fun stretch happening, perhaps on the inside edge of that right leg, outside edge of that right foot, keep pressing right pinky toe down and then just notice and deepen the breath. We've got two more breath cycles here. Allow yourself to return the awareness to something that you're enjoying in this moment. So the law of continuity, like my teacher very described, he just describes it as like attracts like or like birds of a feather flock together. So we're just noticing how we can do that even in our thoughts. Okay, gently you'll start to walk your hands back so they're underneath your shoulders. You might need to slide that back leg in towards the left leg a little bit more. Make sure the left knee is underneath your left hip and then bring your spine to vertical. The right hand can come to the top of your right thigh and then inhale, sweep up through your left arm and exhale, little side bend towards that back leg. Continue to squeeze your left butt cheek a lot so your pelvis is directly uh -huh, over that leg and it'll just intensify the stretch that's happening on that left side. Awesome stuff. Very gently cartwheel or rather come back up through center and then start to cartwheel your hands down towards the top of your space. Walk back to hands and knees, and then tuck both sets of toes under. Press down into your hands, spreading wide through the fingers, and then lift your pelvis up and back for a downward facing dog with knees bent, knees bent. Oh, buddy man, great. And then from here, just lower your left heel to the floor for three steady breaths and notice what you notice. Continue to lift up through your happy armpits as you wrap the triceps to the floor and then notice the breath. On your next inhalation, you'll bend both of the knees once again, and then exhale, lower just the right heel towards the floor and take three steady breaths. And again, we're just noticing how the body is working and finding gratitude for that. Awesome, soft. Next in breath, go ahead and bend both of your knees. And then exhale, lower your knees towards the mat, tabletop position once again. Cool. As you're ready, you'll inhale and sweep your right hand forward, left leg back, both parallel to the floor for happy bird dog. Make sure your right palm faces in, left inner thigh lifts up and left toes point straight down. And you'll just take three breaths here, pushing down into that left hand to pull your front low ribs in and back as you lengthen your buttocks flesh back. Nice job. Gently exhale, lower just your right hand, bend your left knee, and then take five little pulses, kicking your left heel up towards the sky without impacting the low back. So the low back stays steady and we're finding our happy glutes, happy glutes. Yep. And then gently after five, you'll lower that left knee to meet its mate. 
maybe take some cats and cows if the body feels like it needs it. And again, you're just paying attention, following what feels good. So the whole focus on this, I think for my teacher is this notion called Rikriti and Prakriti. It's an Ayurvedic concept, which I guess we'll get into in a minute. Go ahead and come back to stillness, back to center. And then we'll go ahead and switch sides. So this time your left arm will swim forward, your right leg will float back, both parallel to the floor. Imagine you're pressing into a wall in the middle of your body with that inner right thigh, inner left hand, and press down into the right hand to pull the front ribs back, tailbone lengthens down. Soften your jaw and soften your eyeball. Next exhalation, lower just the left hand. Flex through your right knee, flex through the right foot. And then five little pulses, squeezing your happy tukas to lift that leg. Okay, so with Ayurveda, Prakriti and Vikriti, there's this notion that we want to keep realigning ourselves, bringing ourselves into balance with what in Sanskrit is called our mahad, our unique reason for being. So we're just allowing ourselves to do that. And after you've done five little pulses, you'll just take some cats and cows. Awesome self. Go ahead and come to a still neutral spot. Walk your hands forward about two to three inches. Tuck the toes under and then start to lift your hips up and back towards downward facing dog. And on this down dog, your knees might stay bent or you might find that you want to extend the legs as long as they wish to be extended. But again, you're sending the inner thighs back, the outer hips up, the heels back towards the floor, even if the knees are bent. Great. All right. Inhale, lift your right leg up and back. Flex through that right foot. Draw your outer left hip back even more. Now you're going to pull your outer left hip back so much as you squeeze your outer left glute that you can stack your right hip on top of your left. That sounds so weird, but you're squeezing your left butt cheek to stack the right butt cheek. Yay, you might then bend that top knee, your right knee, and continue to squeeze your left butt cheek to draw the left hip back. Oh yeah, look at that, that looks pretty. On your next exhalation, engage the core, inhale, gaze to your ham, and exhale, step that right foot outside of your ham. Happy days, there we go. This might be a great opportunity for those blocks or not, but you'll take a moment to just reach back through your left heel, lift up through your inner left thigh and hug your outer right hip in towards your inner left thigh, hugging into midline. Great, option to stay right here. Otherwise, lower your back knee to the floor. Walk your left hand slightly to the left. Maybe bring your right hand to the outside edge of your right knee. And then you'll start to rotate towards the right. You might stay happy as a clam here. You might bend your back knee and grab the outside edge of your back foot. So when I did this this morning, I realized, wow, I have not done Twisted Monkey in a long time. So you're just pausing and you're breathing. You're noticing what you notice here. Where is the sensation? And can you find a sense of openness and expansion in the heart space, focusing on what's working well and moving the body into those spaces that feel good? Nice work. Take one more breath cycle here. And then very mindfully, if you're holding that back leg, you'll release the right hand. Bring both hands back to the inside edge of your right foot. Go ahead and tuck those back toes under and straighten that back leg long, powerful, and strong. And then lift your hips enough to step your right foot back to meet its mate. Bloop. Ha <laughs> ha, plank pose. <laughs> and then you're gonna take a moment to pause here and breathe and find one thing that you're enjoying about plank in this moment. And on your next exhale, bend your knees and lift back for downward facing dog. And then just notice, notice what you notice. So we're always asking ourselves to come back to symmetry, back to balance. And we wanna do that with our thoughts, our words and our actions. Okay. Let's try that on the other side. Go ahead and inhale, lift your left leg up and back. Again, flex through that foot a lot. And then 
squeeze your right butt cheek a lot to pull the outer right hip back and stack the left hip on top so the rotation happens from the engagement of the glutes. And then you might bend that top leg, continue to squeeze your right butt cheek, pulling the right hip back as you push the hands down and forward. Nice job and happy breath. Next exhalation, engage the core. Inhale, look forward and exhale, step that left foot outside of your hands. Awesome sauce. Again, blocks might be used or not, but you'll take a moment to pause here and find the length between the inner knees, finding that sense of spaciousness and grace here. And then you might stay here or lower that back knee to the floor. Slightly walk your left, sorry, right hand off the mat to the right and bring the out left hand to the outside edge of the left knee. And again, you're pushing down through that right hand to lift up through the low belly and rotate the ribs towards the left. And you might stay there or grab the outside edge of your back knee, back foot rather. And then notice if you need to point the foot or flex the foot, what feels good to you here? If you roll to the knife edge of your left foot on the or right foot on the first side, you might roll to the knife edge of the left foot on this side. And again, you're just pausing in your breathing. You're going for what feels good. I know that this concept is one that I'm wanting to work with because I do have a tendency or propensity to seek out what's not working. But what if I go towards what's working? Allow myself to experience that. And the law of continuity, according to the teachings of Samskhya, will bring more of that into my awareness. Okay, very gently, you might release that back foot, bring both hands into the inside edge of your left foot, tuck both sets of toes, un or rather back sets of toes under, push through the floor, lift the right leg up, and then lift the hips enough to step your left foot back, plank pose. And then you've got three steady breaths here, just noticing what you notice. The end of your third exhalation, you'll make your way back to downward facing dog and just take a moment to pause and take a moment to breathe. After your third exhalation, we'll meet on hands and knees tabletop position. Awesome stuff. Cool. Go ahead and stand tall on your shins. Again, might be great to have a blanket underneath your knees. Might not. It's totally up to you. But you're going to step your right foot in front of you. Hands can stay on the hips for the moment or be wherever they need to be. Now with that right foot coming forward, bring both hands to the top center of your right thigh. Awesome. Squeeze your back butt cheek a lot, so happy glutes. And then you're only letting the pelvis come as far forward as you can keep that back butt cheek engaged. From there, you might stay there or might lift your left arm up for a little bit of a side stretch. But continue to push into your front foot, continue to push in your back knee, hug those points together. And you might choose to grab your left wrist with your right hand, pull up first, and then maybe a little side bend towards the right, but you're squeezing that left butt cheek a lot. You're pushing into that right foot a lot and you're finding a little bit of lift. Nice work. Next in breath, come back up through center. If you're holding the hands, release them and draw the hands back to the hips. Use your core to step the right foot back. Yay! And then step the left foot forward. I know, that's crazy. Okay, and then once again, all the same things that we did before. So the impetus is really engaging the back glute. So the things that we're not really aware of are the things that direct us. So we're trying to redirect our awareness. So squeeze the back glute, push down into the front foot, hug your back knee and front foot together. And then you might choose to stay there, hands on the top left thigh. You might choose to reach your right arm up towards the sky, keep squeezing your right butt cheek. You might choose to grab your right wrist with your left hand. And if you do all that, you wanna reach up first, keep squeezing your right butt cheek and then maybe side bend towards the left, but we're hugging right butt cheek, pushing into left foot, butt cheek, butt cheek, butt cheek. And then relax in our face as best as we can. Uh -huh. <laughs> and the next in breath, come out of the side bend, gently release the hands. 
and then draw your hands to your hips. Step your left foot back. Tuck both sets of toes under and just take a moment to sit in toe squat once again and just breathe and notice what we notice here, what's working out awesomely for us now. Cool. And then stand back up on your shins. Hands will come to your hips. And I like to sort of U-shape my hips, my thumbs around my hips, and, but you can turn your hands down if that works for you. But you're gonna draw the shoulders up towards your ears, draw the shoulder blades onto your back. I encourage you to keep your back toes or your toes tucked under. And then you'll tuck your chin to your chest, start to draw the shoulder blades together and lightly press the pelvis forward. Excuse me, with the chin tucked to the chest, you might then release one hand to one foot, the other hand to the other foot. You might stay exactly as you are. You might then choose to look up towards the sky and the ceiling if that feels good for you. But again, we're finding what feels good and we're going towards what feels good. No need to push or punish in any way that's not necessary. And then very gently, you'll engage that core. Gently bring one hand to one hip, the other hand to the other hip. Bring the spine back up to vertical. Sit back down on your toes for one to two long, steady breath cycles. Awesome, stop. And then we'll make our way forward to forearm. Forearms. So let's go ahead and walk our forearms to the floor. You can interlace your hands if you'd like or not. The hands can also stay in a number 11 shape. But then you'll step your right foot back and you'll step your left foot back and we'll find ourselves in everyone's other favorite pose, plank pose. So we wanna make sure that the front body and the back body are working evenly. So if you feel like there's not a lot going on, lower your hips just a little bit and then curl your tailbone back towards your feet Scoop your pubic bone up to your belly and push down through your forearms, your elbows as you lift up through your happy inner armpits. You can choose to stay here or start to bend the knees and walk the feet towards your face. But again, if you take that option, keep lifting through your inner armpits, rounding like you're in a little cat pose, pushing down through forearms. And you'll take two to three more breaths, trying to find length and extension on the right and left side of the body. Awesome thoughts. Those of you that walked to dolphins, start to walk your feet back. And then we'll all take a momentary pause, lowering the knees to the mat. And you can either take child's pose or you can just lie flat on your belly. You choose whatever option works best for you. Awesome thoughts. Okay. Let's go ahead and draw ourselves up to hands and knees. So if you're on your belly, plant your hands, push yourself back to hands and knees. And if you're in child pose, just walk forward into hands and knees. Cool. And then from here, just take one last down dog before we switch onto our bum. So just lifting the hips up and back. Down dog is just an extension pose so it helps you find length through the vertebra. And often that just helps with the breath. Gently draw the knees to the mat and then swivel your legs around in front of you to sit for Dandasana staff pose. Okay. Now, before we go any further, I want you to have your blocks somewhere nearby in case if you need them and to have your blanket somewhere nearby in case if you need it. So I started with a standard blanket like this and then I folded that in half. And then I folded that in half again. And the blanket is here to put my butt on if I feel like I would like some support underneath my butt. And if I'm like, I don't need that, the blocks are here in case if I want some support underneath my chest. So we're using the things that we've got. So I'm gonna start on my blanket for now. You choose which option works best for you once you know where we're going. So we're gonna to go to Supta Ardha Virasana. So you'll start by bending your left knee, drawing the knee into the chest. Hold the outside edge of your left ankle and bring the outside edge of the left ankle outside of your left hip. Cool. From there, 
We want to make sure our left knee is still pointing forward. Hands will come back behind you. Lift your hips and then start to walk back maybe to your forearms or elbows. And you might just stay here. And again, just like we did at the very beginning with that mini fish pose, you're pushing down through the elbows, hugging the shoulder blades onto the back, lifting the heart up. You might choose to go a little bit further down and you can either use the blocks underneath you or just lie completely flat on your back. You're choosing what works best for you. If you are on your back completely flat, you might bring your arms over your head and hold opposite elbow. And then you'll just take three steady breaths. We're trying to make sure that that sensation is in the middle of your left thigh, not in the knee or the hip. And you'll just take a few moments to pause and breathe here, finding something about this shape that you're enjoying, whether it's the release, whether it's the openness across the chest, whether it's the intensity, whatever you happen to be enjoying. Allow yourself to notice and take note of that. I guess those are the same thing. And then very mindfully, if you're all the way on your back, you'll start to bring your hands alongside your hips, tuck your chin to your chest and push yourself up. If you're on your forearms, same thing, push the hands and lift yourself up. Grab the outside edge of your left ankle, hug the knee into the chest and then release the leg in front of you. You can take some ankle circles there once you find yourself there, if that feels good. And then we'll set ourselves up for the second side. So when you're ready, you'll bend your right knee in, grab the outside edge of your right ankle, swim the right ankle back behind you and start to walk yourself back. And again, you're paying attention to what feels good on your right knee, your right ankle, your right hip. Maybe you hug those shoulder blades onto the back and that mini fish pose pushing down into the forearm. Or maybe you're all the way supine with the arms over your head, perhaps clasping opposite elbow and just breathing into your side body, breathing into wherever there is opening happening for you. Awesome, stop. Okay, if you're on your back, start to bring your hands alongside your hips. Push down into the hands and the forearms and bring yourself up to sit. I like that variation. <laughs> and then grab your outer right ankle, bring it in front of you, extend your legs long and maybe take some ankle circles here. Cool. Last few things before or we lie down. So you have the option of just extending both of your legs in front of you and crossing your left ankle over the top of your right thigh. You can then bend your right foot or right knee and put your right foot on the floor for this variation of Sukhi Randrasana. You can also bring the outside edge of the right foot to the floor, stacking the left ankle on top for Agni Sambhasana. If you're taking this option, highly encourage you to bring your hands to your feet Press the balls of your feet into your hands, push your hands into the balls of your feet and hinge from there. If you are still here, just push down through the hands, hug the shoulder blades onto the back and flex through that left foot a lot. But you'll just take three to five breaths, noticing what you notice in your hips, finding a sense of gratitude for where you're at. So sometimes we need to back off and sometimes we need to go forward and both can be moments and opportunities for us to celebrate. Okay, those in Agni start to work your way out. Those in Suki Randrasana, you'll start to extend your right leg forward, gently uncross the left leg. And then notice if you want a windshield wiper your whole leg. So they're going in and out and in and out like a kid waiting for ice cream or candy or something pleasant to come along. And then we'll go ahead and try the other side. So you might just start by crossing your right ankle over the top of the left thigh, bending the left knee, planting the left foot on the floor and happily staying here, hugging those shoulder blades onto your back. You might also choose to bring the outer left shin to the floor and work towards Agni Sambhasana, and if you do that, you'll shift your pelvis to the left. Hands will then come to the balls of the feet. You'll push out as you push in. And again, if you're here in Sukhi Randras, and then noticing how you can still keep lifting through the heart space, keeping the chest open, because you feel that fun stuff happening in your outer right hip. 
soft and soft. We got three more breath cycles here. And again, find what you're enjoying, find what's working for you, whether it's a challenge and you like a healthy challenge, whether it's a release and you like a healthy release, whether it's just being with your breath in this moment, having time just with you well, and with us. And then very gently, if you're in Agni, start to work your way out. If you're in Suki Randrasana variation, extend the left leg long, extend the right leg long. Again, you might circle the ankles or slowly, windshield wiper the hips, the thighs rather internally and externally rotating the thigh bones. Cool. And last thing before we lie down, hands back behind you, fingertips pointing in alignment with your toes. Legs can be bent or straight, it's totally up to you, but you're just gonna bend the elbows, hug the shoulder blades onto your back and press your chest forward. And you might just stay here, pushing down through the index finger and thumb. You might choose to lift your head high, but you're just taking a moment to pause and breathe and go wherever is feeling nice for you. And if the hips have lifted, lower them back down. Sit tall for a moment, extending your legs long for Dandasana. And just notice what you notice here, how the body's feeling. And then gently, let's start to make your way to your back. Okay. Now, final thing that I'll instruct you to go through before we um, have freestyle, well, you can repeat that fish pose that we started with at the beginning of practice and just notice how that feels now. So your legs will be long, hands alongside your hips, push down through the elbows, hug the shoulder blades onto the back and lift the heart space away from the floor head away from the floor potentially or not. And then you'll gently just release the shoulders and lower back down. And when you find yourself on your back, I want you to notice what feels like it's most calling to you next. So we're paying attention to what feels good and we're trying to move towards that. So the mahad, this word, I, I found it interesting when I learned that this week, but this word essentially is each person's unique way of being or unique purpose for being. And according to Samkhya philosophy, the theory goes that before each and every one of us was born, was incarnated, there was a unique reason for our existence, a unique purpose that each one of us was destined to fill. And so all of the things that we know ourselves as, both our strengths as well as our challenges, were said to culminate in order to enable us to fulfill that unique gift. And it's said that by following what feels most integrous to us, that we can start to have that purpose, that intention revealed to us. So for these last few moments as you're fidgeting around and doing whatever the heck you're doing, I encourage you to continue to go towards that which feels good to you with the hope, with the intention that by doing so, we're each enabling ourselves to go a little bit more towards our unique signature for being, our unique purpose and reason. And then once you feel complete, please make your way to some symmetrical pose to complete. Might be Supta Baddha Konasana, might be Constructive Rest or Shavasana, but pick something that feels nurturing to you to spend a few moments in. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm a little cold. So I would encourage you, if you are cold, to wrap the body so that you can be still, so that you can feel supported.
And then once you've settled into your shape, take a few seconds to just stitch it around until you really feel good. So it feels like you can really let go and receive the support from the floor or the blocks or props, whatever you happen to be using. And then we'll focus today on a, a Kriya that will just basically bring your awareness to your breath. So as you inhale, I want you to experience or imagine or visualize that every cell of your body is taking a breath in and drawing that energy to your heart. At the top of the inhalation, you hold that breath for a few counts. And then you exhale and you send that energy back to every cell of your being. And you'll just do that a few more times, inhaling, drawing all the energy into the heart space, holding it there for a brief period of time, and then sending it lovingly out to every part of your being. The end of your next exhalation, you'll just gently let the technique go. And just take three breaths here. Begin to invite small movement into your fingers and your toes. If you are in Supta Baddha Konasana, use the hands to close the legs. And then extend the arms alongside your ears and stretch and wiggle and yawn in any way that feels good to you. When you feel complete, you'll start to make your way to your right side. If you're still on your back, stay as long as you'd like. If you're on your side, start to roll yourself up to a tall, comfortable seat. And I do encourage you to sit tall and well. This is something you can do on your back. So if you're still supine, go ahead and stay there. 
But once you're vertical, if you're vertical, take a few seconds to fidget and settle into your shape. Allow your gaze to remain inward or towards the floor. And you're just noticing first how you can make the body a bit more comfortable, where you can allow the weight of the shoulders to drop away from the ears. How you can find more weight into the pelvis, into the floor, the legs into the floor. How you can then bring your awareness into the inner landscape of the body. So finding spaciousness in the feet, through the tubes of your legs, through the pelvis and the abdomen, finding space in the throat, in the back of the eyes. And then from here, you'll bring your awareness to the nose. And you'll follow the breath in through the nose and out of the nose. And what you're looking for here is to find that sense of pause that naturally happens at the top of the inhalation and at the bottom of the exhalation. It's in that pause that we're able to reorient ourselves. It's in that pause that we can remind ourselves to choose to look for the good, for what's working in all things. And so as you continue to sit with yourself for just a minute more, I encourage you to return to the breath every time the mind wanders, trying to rest in that pause. We'll go ahead and complete our practice by drawing our hands to heart center, Anjali Mudra. Press the palms into each other. Receive the weight of the thumbs into your sternum and then give your heart back to your hands. Allow your chin to dip a bit towards your chest and then exhale all the breath from your mouth. Take a big breath in. And a big breath out. The light within me, that Mahad within me, honors and salutes the light, the Mahad within each of you. Namaste.